Hey Rebuilders, it is Remy and I am here at Top Shelf Aquatics in Winter Park. There's a lot of stuff that has been going on at Top Shelf Aquatics and it's been a while since we've done a tour, so let's go inside and check it out. What's up, my man? How you doing? Good, man. How are Good you? To see you? Good. Good Had to see you. Had to come too. back to Top Shelf. Uh, if you don't know Blaine, Blaine does all the YouTube stuff. He's also on a little card that you get whenever you order corals. Yeah, anytime you order from us, I come in a box, a tiny little piece of me. Yeah, a little spokes bottle for <laughs> Top Shelf Aquatics. We haven't been here in a while. I want to do an update on the whole entire, a whole entire thing. Let's do it. We have a ton of stuff we've got to show you guys today. We've got new display tanks. We've got some new corals that we want to showcase, but let's go ahead and start here in the Top Shelf retail store. Uh, we're here in our Winter Park location here in Orlando. Uh, this is an awesome spot that we have. We've got a 1200 gallon fish wall over here. We've got a ton of coral flats and we've got this awesome display tank actually right behind you. Kevin's been working on this for quite some time now. As you guys can see, the scape is really dynamic, really <laughs> interesting. Um, he's worked in several waterfall features. So it's a saltwater waterfall, which is really yeah, crazy. Yeah, you can see it coming in. Yeah. The little channels. Obviously the air plants mixed in up top. One of the mangroves from my collection at home. And then just a huge assortment of some really, really cool top shelf pieces, aquacultured stuff we have here at the farm. It's kind of unique in how we're trying to make everybody happy. So up top, we're running some of these crazy Kessel track lights. They're awesome. Kevin did some pretty unique things with a couple of these. I'll try to see if I can find one. So they're actually on little rods we drilled into the rock work and that way we can take them out and we can soak these Very cool. they obviously need to get a lot of water to help make sure they're nice and happy I think the one thing that Kevin does really well he creates these amazing structures right For and sure. I think I think as the hobbyists as they're coming in here they're like oh, okay well a typical aquarium is a bunch of rocks you know just kind of piled on each other right and Kevin says oh no no we can do all this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but one thing this tank also does is it really does a great job of displaying the corals that are available in the store. I mean, one of my favorites here, this is a Raja in pajamas. Raja in pajamas. It's so yes. amazing. It's like a Raja rampage, but it has these giant blue streaks. Some to amazing it. grafting blue to it. It's um, really a cool piece. There's a bunch of Ganepora. Um, what are, what is one of your favorite pieces in here? I really like these. There's fairy parts so up here. So you actually you <laughs> said it right there. So. You, Right up top, we have a really cool frag of some fairy fartzoanthids that yeah. I have really fallen in love with. But this group of acans, this little garden we've got started up front there is really awesome. Crazy how puffy they get. These are like the Japanese deep water style of them. Yeah, but those are cool. Kevin always has been that guy that he's done it all. And so now he's kind of getting to the point where he's like, what can I do now? What's yeah. the next level of kind of bringing escape to the next dynamic well, level? And even if even if a hobbyist takes just one little piece of yeah, this, exactly. if one part of this triggers a, oh, I can do that in my home aquarium, I think it's done its job. For sure. And you mentioned it too, the scape as well. Yeah. There's two, so there's actually two return outlets that are on the bottom. So there's a lot of flow that's getting pushed oh, up yeah. as well. Um, and then the way the rockscape works too, I think it really features the corals well and where you can place them in the right lighting, the right flow. Um, you know, like some of the Ghanis and the Alvies are up actually higher because they're getting that really nice wave box motion up top. So it really helps them move around, get those tentacles moving. Yeah. Whereas you see some of the chalices, the rainbow chalice in the back, some of those are actually gonna be hiding away, kind of tucked away. Well, let's go ahead and, and walk over here. So this tank is unique because these are all the Acropora that are grown in the farm, right? Yeah. One of the first things we like to showcase to everyone when they walk into the retail store is our sticks. We you know, pride ourselves in what we do with our SPS and the colors we bring out. Yeah. So it's one of the things we showcase right away. Well, I think uh, something that is extremely undervalued in this hobby is that you guys have done all the hard work here when it comes to making sure that these are aquarium and hobby ready. These have been in aquarium settings for years in some cases. Another thing we really hammer is quarantine here. You know, we for really sure. pride ourselves at, you know, trying to be completely pest free, right? And so going through rigorous quarantine systems, a lot of different ways of getting, you know, corals ready for production. 
We do that here, and you know, when you go into mariculture pieces, you're risking a lot of a lot. pests going into your tank. You know, you have no idea what's on them and what you can bring in. But obviously, we have, a, you know, lots and lots of quarantine we go through to be able to bring these to the hobby for people to sell and put into their tanks at home. Well, let's move on. What, what else we got in here that we want to talk about? We've got a bunch of really cool stuff. We've got a huge selection of you. Let's Euphilia. go check out the, yeah, uh, the torches real for quick. For sure. Yeah, because I, I actually posted a reel about this not too long ago. Yeah. And it's just so mesmerizing. It and is. Some of the colors that you guys have here. Of course, For, you've got like your holy grails yep. and, you know, but the the greens in this one are crazy. Yeah, the I dark mean, green. For sure. We've got, you know, the TSA holy grails, the pot of golds, you know, we've got our blue torches. We also have a wide selection of some octo spawns, some hammers, things like that. But a lot of different things that we have here available at top shelf. And then obviously too, we've got a wide range of some of our bigger pieces too. And then in the back corner, this is gonna be what we talked about a little earlier. This is like the TSA vault, right? So these are some of the pieces that we might not be aquaculturing here at top shelf, but we still wanna to provide to the hobby. So, you know, some of the acanthos, some of the cinerinas. Yeah. We talked a little bit about the scolies and some of the projects we'll talk a little bit about later on here in the video. But scolies are one of those too, but it just takes, these take longer, right? They take a lot of time. They take a yeah. lot of time, so you can And then some them. of these are, yeah, and some of these are spawners too, right? Where yeah. they're gonna do some broadcast spawning, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get one of those activities or things to occur or happen, you know? I think what's nice is this is just a small representation of it is. everything that you guys have on the farm. It's truly just a taste. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where people will come in and we might not even have the exact piece they're looking for here in the retail store, but we can go in the back and grab them a frag and bring it up here into the front, get them yeah. all situated. But I think it's time we go into the back and check out what yeah. we all want to show you guys the farm location. Let's go see it. Let's, Let's it. go see it. Ah, here we are in the farm. One of our favorite places here at Top Shelf. So right off the bat, we've got a 30,000 gallon aquaculture facility here. Yeah. So we are not short on any tank space. We've got a lot of tanks in here and I say 30,000 gallons and I think it's starting to grow past that at this point. I yeah. should start saying 35,000 gallons because there's more and more tanks that we keep adding on. But here we are in the Top Shelf farm. I haven't been here, it's gotta be a year. A little over a year, yeah. And it just feels so much more full, like there's corals just everywhere, so. For sure, I think in the last year or so, we've had a huge push to really, really focus on growing just nonstop. Yeah. Uh, there was a big time and place where we started to just grab colonies and corals and hold them off from cutting just so we could grow them even bigger. And yeah. then that way we could expand the sheer amount that we have. Um, we're getting to the point where you'll see it in a lot of the tanks. Kevin's starting to throw frag racks on walls. Yeah. Kevin's starting to Kevin's starting to get rid of some spaces and turning them into basically more tank space. Yeah. So it really is to the point. I think they've really, really started to hammer in the idea of you know let's grow coral, like yeah. let's go hard on it and let's just grow as much as we possibly can. Well, let's walk around. For sure. So this area is specific to what? So this area right here, there's gonna be about three tanks, right? So we've got one, two, and three. Obviously, each of these systems are gonna be connected all together, you know, kind of going down the line. But these three tanks in the front are our online tanks. So these are gonna be the tanks that have been these are all the corals that are photoed, skewed, and are on the website. So okay. if you look at some of the racks, they're gonna have a letter and then it's going to co correspond to how many you know frag holes back and then that's going to be the exact one that you're seeing on the website so that's for our packing team as we work our way down this is a really awesome system i love this one this is some of our up and coming corals or some of the soon to be released corals we have a lot of the speciosis over here this tank i believe runs just a little bit cooler that's something kevin has been kind of oh, talking about a lot that guy back there the forbidden Ooh. fruit is Unbelievable. The Easter, Easter Sunday up front <laughs> is really nice too. Uh, we've got a nice colony of Walt Disney back there, kind of trying to regrow some of the OG corals yeah. too, bringing those back. You can see too, a lot of the systems, you know, this is another thing I like to hammer home for everyone. It's completely mixed. We have everything yeah, in Zoas, here. Right? You got Zoas, Acros, LPS, there's chalices underneath. I mean, we are putting everything in together. Obviously, we'll have some systems we'll see later on, strictly focused on SPS. 
But I like to tell everyone at home, you know, you can make it happen. Having all the sticks yeah. together with your softies and with your LPS. Everybody too. just needs Kevin to manage their system. Bingo. <laughs> you just need a full team of a farm to run exactly, your tank. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we also, we try to make our system super simple, right? I mean, we keep it as simple as we can. We run a lot of tanks on filter socks, bashy reactors with carbon, and then we dose calc losser. I mean, we try to keep it very simple. Um, we do a lot of, you'll see a lot of refugiums. We try to do a lot of opposite light cycle refugiums and current cycle refugiums, just because we have so many people in the farm currently yeah. that you can see it on a lot of the apex systems. You'll see crazy drops in pH as soon as the day starts. Lucky enough, it's starting to get a little cooler here in Florida. We're about at almost 80 degrees every day. So cold. So cold. We see people wearing sweatshirts <laughs> around town, but it's freezing around here. But we can start opening up the bay doors and we can let all that fresh air come in. And then we kind of start making our way back. These are actually some of the original systems that the farm started out with. The farm was not what you guys see today. When it first started out, it was a lot less systems. This end cap right here, and then the other end cap over there, and the three tanks in the middle were actually some of the first tanks that came into the farm. Uh, so they're some of the older systems, and what's really cool about them is they're basically as easy and simple to keep as possible. They are, like I said before, just filter socks and bashy reactor. I, I really liked the, the video you guys did about the testing reg regimen that, that happens here. Yeah. Um, because it, it really, it gives you a glimpse of the parameters you guys are working with, and while not, while that may not be the same for everybody, right? it's nice that you've clicked in at those numbers and you know that the farm really thrives at those numbers. Yeah, one thing Kevin has always hammered in a lot of the videos we've done together is the key word of stability, right? It's, everyone says it, it's a thing that's a reoccurring term that's heard on a lot of videos, yeah. but the stability is key for us. I mean, maintaining those pinpoint parameter numbers is super important. So that way we can maintain keeping all these corals and animals super happy. Yeah. Obviously over on the side, we've got some giant, you know, water mixing station going on, our fresh water bin, our salt water bin. Yeah. We've got a nice little thing we do where it's salt ready, salt mixing. So that way, you know, if the salt's ready to roll. This image alone of just all of these healthy and colorful colonies, you know? For sure, you could sit right here all day yeah. and look at this system and it's amazing. Uh, the fish are cool too, right? But the corals are out of this world. I mean, all of them are very, very special, unique. And a lot of them are OG pieces too, which is cool to see. So when we talk about a good frag tank, right? We also talk about utilitarian fish. Yes. Is there a mix of fish that you guys put in most of your tanks? Kind of, so we have, you're gonna see a lot of very similar fish in some of our systems. We use a lot of Desjardini tanks. We love them, they do a great job. We have a lot of convict tanks too. We use a lot of Scopus tanks. We're gonna have yellow tanks as well. But then you're gonna see a mix of some really interesting fish, right? We're gonna have an Emperor Angel fish that's down in the sump over here. We have an Achilles <laughs> tang that's over here. Oh, that yeah. Was, yeah the, so this Achilles tang was actually Steven's fish, one of the other co-owners that's, you know, moved from his old store and is now here with us. And so obviously we're gonna have a majority of tangs in our systems that are gonna be doing a lot of the cleaning, but you'll see too a mixture of some of our mollies, our saltwater cultured mollies that we'll mix in as well. They do a great job at grazing, but it's mainly gonna be a focus on tangs and you're gonna see they're gonna be really, really big fish. You know, we do have a lot of these systems, if you've seen, they're on PVC arrays, yeah. right? So yeah. this is a really simple way for us to go into the tanks pull frags out, pull colonies out, frag them, whatever we need to do. But also it's a simple way to clean, right? You can take that section out, you can scrub that clean, or you can put in a whole new PVC section, right? Yeah. So it's kind of a really interesting and unique way to kind of keep a system spotless. We do like a lot, a lot of flow. So you're gonna see not much of detritus is gonna build up in these tanks, especially these in the back. We've got, you know, huge CJ Voyagers. We've got MP60s just blasting these tanks, <laughs> yeah. right? All day long. Flows ripping. Um, so I think people are seeing a lot of the SPS and the Actora that you guys have yep. and are wondering what, what are the parameters that you guys keep these at? Is, it, is the ALC at like 13? You know, are you, are you pushing the pH on all this stuff? What, what are the numbers? So alkalinity is gonna sit right, 8.9 is our favorite number for alk. That is like our money number. We're gonna focus strictly on 8.9. And then when we're looking at our pH, it's gonna swing a lot, but we're sitting at anywhere around 
8.1 to 8.5 in between those kind of areas. Yeah. We really like to push pH higher. The more we can push pH, the better growth we're gonna get out of these corals. And then nitrates, phosphates, we're gonna have certain levels of you know our danger zones, right? So for, for phosphates, 0.15 is kind of our danger zone at too high. So we'll be cutting off feeding, adding GFO in. And then if it's 0.03, we'll do more feedings. So any kind of area in between there is gonna be a happy zone okay. for us. And then for nitrates, we're gonna try and focus on having a little bit more nitrates in our system, anywhere from 10 to 20, anywhere right around there. Okay. 15 is kind of our money number, um, but you wanna make sure that that's present in the tank as well. And then a lot of these tanks too, we're gonna run dual light systems. So we have the radions going on, then we also do the metal highlights so, as well. So it's gonna be a mixture, it's kind of a combo lighting fixture, but the majority of the farm, you're gonna see radions on. Uh, I mean, we over a hundred radions. We've Kevin made a really great point that whenever you have SPS or acros or anything of that sort, you wanna try and mix in at least an hour of some really natural spectrum, you know, that full white light. Yeah. They really enjoy that. They like to take that up, but you know, we can look at the dragons, right? These are some more deep water species. They don't really need to get blasted like some of those Acropora species that are getting hammered in the reefs in the wild. Yeah. They're more of a deep water species, so they can kind of lean more into the full on blues with the, you know, the LEDs. Yeah. For those interested on in learning more about parameters and how the farm is run from a deeper level, I did an entire reef therapy episode with Kevin and we go super deep on a lot of the new projects here at the farm. Yeah. Now I, I want to stop here. It's a great place to stop because this is one of my favorite. One of my favorite species is the uh, is the Monoporosatosa. It's a good one. And you guys have done such a great job of selecting for different colors. We're so used to seeing the red, all red or all orange. Right. But there's purple in that one. Yeah. So <laughs> it, once again, Kevin. I think Kevin's gotten to the point now where he's really trying to play. You know the controller over all these corals, right? He's yeah. trying to get the different colors to graft on each other. So he's like playing all these different science experiments. But like you said, the Monopora setosa, the way they grow is very unique, very kind of bulky and like fingery and just really cool and yeah. unique. And then the fruit swirl though is very, very special. It's, you know, got a mixture of purples, some oranges, kind of like a lightish, kind of greenish color. Obviously the fruit swirl comes with a little higher price tag just because of the grafting <laughs> yeah. and all that, right? But just the regular tequila sunrise or any of the other, just orange and you know reds, you know, grafted together, they're much more reasonable cost, right? Well let's let's look into the Yeah, we've got a couple more. I know I got a really cool Euphilia piece over here in the back that we can showcase. It's like it's a like, beaming light. It, and like volleyball size yeah They're it's huge. like a, it's like a giant bowl of ramen noodles <laughs> that you just want to eat so this right here is the tsa baby grill i i love the story of this coral so about seven eight years ago we were lucky enough to have a group of holy grails have a spawning event in one of our farm systems <laughs> that and is luck for sure luck for sure <laughs> absolute luck that we had those guys spawn out of anything but there was uh. not many that survived and Kevin randomly on one of these PVC arrays saw a tiny, tiny little nub and it showed a little bit of glimmer of hope. And so he cut it away from the PVC array, hit it away into one sump somewhere in the farm. He let it grow out and now it's become this absolutely breathtaking colony. Um, I was lucky enough to watch him cut the original mother colony, which is this, into its multiple pieces. Yeah. And it was like watching Kevin take his kid to school for the first day and he <laughs> was ready to cry. Was he tearing up? He was tearing up, but it was, a, it was something they needed to do together, right? Yeah. And it was awesome. I mean, now it's gotten to the point where it is in production. We've got, you know, multiple single heads that are ready for people to purchase. And it could be the most mundane coral. If it has a story, it's so much better. Uh, we have a really wide range of stuff yeah. in here. There's no- Galaxia. Yeah. Here. One of the most underrated corals, I think in the hobby you is- Gotta give it room. Give it space. I was gonna say <laughs> that, give it space. Uh, it will throw out some crazy long sweepers but they're really cool. Um, yeah. I, I love the way they look. To, like if you look at a lot of the zoas that are underneath yeah. there, like the frozen apples are literally the size of apples. They're gigantic, <laughs> they're, they're, huge. they're huge. And so- I know you have some signature pieces in here yeah, too, Yeah, a ton right? of signature pieces. A lot of new stuff coming too. You know, some of these Ghanis are gonna be new that we're gonna be Beautiful. releasing soon. Yeah. But you know, we've got 
the uh, fruity splice, you know, we've got the flower bomb, we've got a bunch, of, you know, a wide range of sticks in here, everything and anything. And once again, soft corals, LPS, yeah. all of it worked in as well. So like to, I don't know if you work that in or if it's just starting to kind of it's take It's just kind of taking over, <laughs> right? So another reason why the arrays are so nice, cut them out and then you get rid of that GSP if you didn't want it there True. anymore, yeah. it's just gone. Everything is just so beautiful. Yeah, it's, you know, you know, you said it really well. I think every time I come into the farm, I see something new. I, I find a new piece. I fall in love with something new. I learn something new from the crew. And to be able to come in here and kind of, you know, pick the brains of all these really smart individuals is awesome. I, I'm just really thankful that I've gotten the opportunity to be able to showcase this for everyone at home, but to be able to, you know, take you and everyone else that comes by and walk them through the farm is a ton of fun. It's always fun, you know, it's like, taking a reefer into Disney World, mm -hmm. I guess it would be, taking yeah. them into Disney World and they go crazy over it, right? I mean. Yeah, I think uh, your passion shows earlier in this, when I first <laughs> yeah. got here on the trip, yeah. I, I brought to you one of my willows for my tank and yeah. your reaction <laughs> was amazing, so. If you're getting into this hobby and you're getting into reefing in general, you're gonna, you're gonna meet a lot of really awesome people. I mean, yeah. I would not have the job that I have today without meeting you. And I know we have had this conversation a ton of times, but it's very special, the people you get to connect with, the things you get to see and the things you get to do. I mean, I'm very blessed to have the job to be able to do what I do, but. Well, at the end of all of these videos, yeah. I always say, I need to go shopping. <laughs> I so. think you gotta go shopping. <laughs> There's a lot of shopping yeah. to do. We definitely gotta keep filling up that tank. I know we sent you some corals up before. Yeah. We gotta keep filling it up with TSA aquaculture pieces, yeah. no doubt. Oh, Blaine, thanks for uh, taking us on the tour. Yeah, Appreciate man, absolutely. It. So good to see you, and thanks guys for stopping by and checking out the TSA farm, and enjoy hanging out with Kevin and whoever else. Yeah, I'm gonna go shopping. See ya. <laughs>